Wisdom Keepers, Wisdom Seekers, welcome back to Wisdom Drops, your source for daily drops of wisdom and savvy cat astrology. My name is Tanya, and today we are discussing the new moon Sagittarius eclipse. Happy eclipse that's taking place today, December 4th, 2021. This is a very interesting eclipse for a variety of reasons. Not only is it an eclipse, but this is also taking place in the sign of Sagittarius, which is another interesting thing because Sagittarius is, of course, ruled by Jupiter. And so I started talking about this foundational eclipse stuff in the part one and part two of the series that we're doing. And today I welcome you to part three, where we are focusing on what specifically about this eclipse is happening in terms of planetary conjunctions and in this case mercury is conjunct the 12 degree eclipse by a three degree orb at 15 degrees of sagittarius so therefore there is a mercury conjunction during this eclipse okay and that my friends is the topic of today's video now, before we jump on into it, I just want to say I sure do appreciate all of y'all who like my content and holla, we just made it to a thousand subscribers. Yay! Thanks everybody for being here. I can officially say that Wisdom Drops community has over a thousand members. So way to rock and roll, stay cool. And if you are a budding astrologer or somebody who knows that they're meant to do this stuff and learn and practice and embody this ancient craft, I am offering you a Wisdom Drops Astrology School. And in this edition, this is for people who want to start their own businesses, people who want to not only understand this craft, have a skill set developed, not just regurgitate information. No, 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 no. For people who want to authentically develop a relationship, a context, an experience based knowledge set, right, of tools with astrology, that, my friends, is what we're offering. So if you want to learn more about that, it starts in January, by the way, link to the description and everything down below, as well as the application down below. Okay. For those of you who already know, you are ready to rock and roll. And it has been fun with what I've been seeing thus far. So I'm excited to keep hearing about those of you who need to, uh, you know, get to that next level and want me to be your teacher to do that. I'm very excited for that. Moving forward, let's jump on in to the Mercury conjunction and we are going to share our screen. So you should start to see this Mercury conjunction at 15 degrees aforementioned. And the fact that this is conjunct the moon and the sun means what? Okay. Anytime you are interpreting a lunation, that's a new moon or a full moon. P.S. Be sure to check out parts one and two of this series, right? But anytime you're going to witness that in the heavens, a uh, conjunction like that, you're going to understand right that this energy is embodied through the new beginnings and the energy that births at this time or if it's a full moon are showing itself at that time and by that what i mean to say with a few less words mercury <clears throat> is that mercury being conjunct this new moon makes it extra thought based or mercurial or communication based or mercurial or uh witty or pun oriented or you know in this case because mercury is in the sign of sagittarius otherwise known as the sign of jupiter right it could also be more uh kind of take on a tone of uh, jovial energy. It could also be a bit more interested in the philosophical nature of, you know, the universe or existence, right? So there's just a lot of opportunities that come up when you have a planetary conjunction. And with Mercury's lens or filter or, you know, kind of realm of influence, you're going to be able to see in day-to-day -day experiences words will take more meaning over the next six months, right? This month, especially, but over the next six months, it'll seem like philosophical concepts become clearer. Maybe you'll be able to communicate your words, whereas you previously weren't, right? In order to like understand, you know, what is going on at a deeper level, you might need to express it just as much because you have that Mercury Jupiter kind of blend or confluence, right? And I said, we're going to read Mercury in this video. Okay, kids. So we're going to read Mercury. So let's do that. Mercury. Yes. We already read the fact that it's in Sagittarius. And again, in part one of this series, I started off with talking and reminding y'all about what is an eclipse. 
so that you know what that is, okay, for you and the astrological real life implications of that. And in number two, I talked about the significance of Sag in death. Okay, that was the last video before this one. Now this Mercury thing. So we already talked about just now Mercury kind of vibes. I'll go into more depth on that in a second. We also just identified that Mercury's conjunction is almost like a filter through which the light of the sun and the moon shine through. Anytime there's another planet on top of the, the sun and the moon, it creates a sort of filtered experience or a realm of influence, right? I just have to plug in my laptop. So anyway, y'all, that's just something to consider and know, okay, about this. Now, let's go into Mercury things just in case you're not yet sure about what they are, right, in depth. Bear with me. All right, we got it. Long live electricity, or the sun as it may be. Okay, thing three. <laughs> Before we get to thing three, thing two. Thanks for bearing with me, everybody. Finishing off thing two. Mercury, okay, this idea that Mercury is uh, in Sagittarius, it needs to be a little more uh, emphasized because it's a filter through which the luminary's light can even go through, okay? Now, reading that a step further, we need to also emphasize that Mercury is itself in relationship and communication with other planets okay so this is where we're going to advance this reading into the next stage after reviewing this critical information understanding that mercury is playing this role and mercury things being cars you know watch out for travel travel especially far abroad watch out for all that being much more significant in the next six months because jupiter of course rules sagittarius and the arrow goes far does it not Okay, and it is about expansion, but Mercury is local travel and also messages and stuff. So you just want to be aware and careful anytime you're thinking about uh, going anywhere, just be aware of how philosophical implications can end up playing out in a more serious nature, because this is going to be a, one of our next videos of uh, the Jupiter Saturn uh, conjunction in Aquarius and how that's relevant to this here. Okay. But, you know, let's move on. That was things one and two. And now thing three, we need to really get back to this. Mercury is in relationship with other planets, okay? And in this chart, you'll see before you, the purple planet Mercury at 15 degrees, okay, of Sagittarius is in a square. That's the red line with Neptune, okay? And so this is a 90 degree based relationship, give or take. This is a five degree orb, okay? at this time but you know that says there could be some mental fog just as much as there could be some deception okay so do not be deceived if you feel that there's a something is a fish it's probably a fish notice to fish no disrespect you know what i'm saying to the fish out there i do not consume fish personally oh my goodness but my cats sometimes do and they are currently going crazy so i hope that background noise wasn't too much now, with that said, friends, in the higher vibration, what could this be? Because we're always looking at the high and low. Again, Emerald Tablets, Astrology, Thoth, Hermes, there is a high and low vibration to everything, okay? So it's accessible to you, which you choose, which is resonating, which is making itself known in your life. It's good to be aware of both so that we don't always bring in one or the other, but rather acknowledge the balance of life. So, you know, while swaying positive, because we have some beneficial energy around this joint, okay, and in our currency. But with that said, the higher vibe of this, you know, uh, all that to say there are lower potentials, especially given that Neptune does have connotations of deception, especially given that, yes, this is a square or a 90 degree based relationship, which has connotations of aggression, of, uh, you know, uh, confrontation, which is not a bad thing in and of itself. It's all in how that's done, right? But, you know, that is definitely also something that is associated with the 90 degree angle, okay, in astrology, as well as a certain severance or death. But we go into so much more depth on this in astrology school. And I have applied activities to align your skill sets with knowledge like this to where it becomes applied and integrated right but you know i do want to make sure that you get that that this is uh, for higher or lower and now on the higher mercury in square with neptune i will interpret that as potential around manifesting spiritually 
aligned truths in our belief systems or in our expression of our belief systems. And why do I say expression? Well, if you're not already figuring that out, first things first, this is a fire sign. Second thing, second, it has that spunk and that energy of the fire, right? The fire, but then it's also the new moon. So it's a new beginning. And it's also an eclipse. It's a new moon conjunct the eclipse points. So this is something, the North Node and South Node of the moon. So this is something that will bring us forward into a karmic initiation. This is a karmic portal. That is what I spoke of the eclipse as, as being. It's a karmic portal, right? In the part two of this video or one. And so with that said, friends, you want to just check, like, am I tuning into the manifesting of spiritual uh, aligned truths and, and putting my energy into that because of the fiery Sagittarius energy? right? Or am I maybe getting caught up in a disillusion uh, with the Mercury square Neptune and feeding into some type of dogma that doesn't have any real solid conceptual backing, okay? That's what I, I want to caution you against and also encourage you to witness in your daily experiences, okay? Because Sagittarius energy, as I talked about in depth in the previous video, is about philosophical concepts so you can check that out at your leisure but you know with that said the, the potential is definitely there for you know getting deeper insights and spiritual uh downloads from guides from benevolent beings on the other side magical energetic based beings why why well neptune of course neptune is considered the higher octave of venus so, you know, you really have to be a critical thinker. Astrologers are sometimes, I would like to say, in this moment of reflection with you, I feel as if like astrologers are almost sometimes as good as they are critical thinkers, if that makes sense. I've had my chart interpreted quite a few times, and it's always so interesting to see different people's reflection of that back at me, especially as I myself am an astrologer and have in some ways learned through their reflections uh, about the subject objective nature of astrology, despite these ubiquitous, uh, you know, applications uh, that we can all pull from and that we all use. It's like a language, right? Despite the fact we might all speak it, everybody's application of it is entirely unique to them at some level. And so um, I love that. I love that about astrology. And I guess I'm kind of landing in just a random moment of acknowledging that with you here in this video and also reminding you, I am teaching a year long program on this stuff and it starts in January. And I'm excited to take those of you who are ready to advance yourselves professionally to that type of seriousness, to that type of development with astrology, you know, to practice this for yourself as part of your soul's mission. That's what I'm about. So anyway, continuing on with our groovy little train of thought here, PS, I love the thousand of y'all who decided I love Tanya and decided to subscribe. But with that said, this Mercury here, okay, is also in a conjunction with the new moon and the full moon or the new moon and the sun, right? Because a new moon is always with the sun. And in addition to the being square with Neptune, it is also in a sextile conversation with who? None other than da, 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 Saturn. That's right. At nine degrees of Aquarius. And Saturn, you know, is not just about this, you know, uh, limited, fuddy-duddy uh, kind of, you know, what is this, you know, uh, kind of energy, because he's in Aquarius, you know, it's, it's not about that sort of judgmental, uh, you know, limiting, restrictive kind of whatever, unless it's going in this sort of like uh, detached, like technocratic sort of way, because that's definitely the shadow of Aquarius. More so Aquarian naturally is aligned toward more ideological constructs that are more open. And even in the case of the crazy ass technocrat, they're still an innovator, right? So it's like, it has that certain genius to it, even if it is Saturnian. So this nice sextile based relationship with the new beginning and with specifically Mercury, okay, is 
auspicious. It's auspicious because it's bringing in the higher vibration or the potential for that as more of a likelihood. But, you know, we might be getting really clear on what systems need to, you know, advance and how they can. But on the flip side, the quote unquote bad guys could also be learning more about how they could advance their systems. And for them, I see it more as uh, an awareness with this ongoing Jupiter, excuse me, ongoing Uranus Saturn square, you know, that's pretty intense. Um, and that is again, perfecting soon, you know, as you can see here, nine and 11 degrees between Saturn and Uranus respectively. So they're getting a hard reality check moment. And we, the collective are also getting a hard reality check moment. What is classic and what needs to advance that will not you know, withstand the test of time. And what crazy ass implications is this technocratic experimental empire trying to jab, hint, hint, us with at an indoctrinated level of, you know, really just a uh, rudimentary level, what is it, you know, uh, genocide, really, if you read the, you know, the, the process of genocide, that's what they're attempting. So anyway, what will, what about that will not succeed? And that's what this Uranus says. It's like, ah, uh, wait a minute. Cause Uranus is actually like, can you envision like the Ramones or like the Clash or some like really intense punk rock band just going like, absolutely. It just crazy, you know, and like going and just rocking out at a concert. I remember I saw Green Day once live and, you know, say what you want to say about Green Day. Their new music is like hard to even say as music. I don't even know what happened to those guys. I'm like, did y'all get the implant? I don't know what happened. But like, you know, point being, I saw them once and they are bad ass performers. You know what I'm saying? Say what you want to say, but like they are bad ass performers. Those guys were like literally born to do that. Like their energy is insane. But digression aside, imagine. Imagine those sorts of people at a concert with like a glass bottle and they just like, like hit it on a table and like, you know, start freaking out and like just going absolutely crazy and like start blowing like Molotov cocktails and things. That is Uranus. That has Uranus written all up in it. It is an out of nowhere. It is a volatility. It is a, a destruction based middle finger to the, to the whatever flag. You know what I'm saying? It's a very like rebellious antithetical but simultaneously awakening it brings forward an awareness you might not like it you might not enjoy the taste but uranus will always deliver a unique flavor and so that especially in the sign of taurus is a relevant metaphor as we see saturn's uh inherent vibration echoed through a venus AKA the dispositor of Taurus energy uh, conjunct Pluto, you know, over here in Saturn's own sign of Capricorn, which of course would be the next level of reading this Saturn aspect to Mercury, which again, we've landed on at this point because Mercury is within a three degree conjunction of the eclipse. Have I mentioned I teach you how to breadcrumb out this entire chart in Wisdom Drops Astrology School where you actually can interpret things at this level? Because it's a thing. But you know, with that said, <laughs> I do want to draw your attention to this, folks. This Jupiter, uh, you know, energy here is definitely leading the show. And that's going to be one of our next videos. Okay, so we'll be talking about this Jupiter Saturn energy. And we're going to talk about this Pluto Venus imprint more because it is in the energetic tattoo of this eclipse. With that said, thank you so much for all of you who liked this video. If you're still here, put me a groovy pink flower in the comments down below. Thank you so much to those of you who do support the channel, like this content, share it with a friend, etc., etc. And with that said, through next time, until next time, stay tuned for the next vid and may the stars be with you. Peace.